Hey everyone. I wanted to share an experience I had last fall about something strange and unexplainable that took place near Flagstaff, Arizona. I've always been a bit of a skeptic when it comes to these types of stories, but this one has left me seriously questioning the world we live in. Let me start from the beginning. Last September, my friends and I went on a camping trip to the Coconino National Forest, located near Flagstaff. We were a group of six and enjoyed spending our weekends hiking, fishing, and exploring the forest during the day and hanging around the campfire, joking and reminiscing at night. We had chosen a pretty remote spot, away from any other campers, to fully immerse ourselves in the beauty of nature. It was our third night there, and I still couldn't get over just how serene and calming the place was. That evening, we sat around the fire, roasting marshmallows and sharing stories with each other under the vast Arizona sky. The moon was shining brightly overhead, casting an eerie but beautiful glow all around us. Everything seemed perfectly tranquil. That is, until a sudden bone-chilling howl echoed through the forest, immediately silencing our laughter and causing all of us to exchange tense glances. Probably just a coyote, my friend Mark suggested, but there was a hint of uncertainty in his voice. We all knew Flagstaff had various wildlife, including coyotes, but for some reason, this howl seemed different. It was far too guttural and human-like. Needless to say, we spent the rest of the night on edge, talking quietly and casting nervous glances into the woods surrounding our campsite. The next morning we awoke to find that any feelings of unease from the previous night had seemingly vanished with the daylight. We had planned a long hike to the nearby mountain for the day and pushed the howl to the back of our minds, attributing it to the tricks our imaginations can play on us in the dark. During the hike, however, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. The sensation was so strong that I constantly found myself scanning our surroundings, but never found anything out of the ordinary. Tired from our hike, we returned to our campsite, just as the sun began to set. Once again, we gathered around the campfire for dinner and conversation. At this point, the howling from the previous night was all but forgotten in the revelry of our day's adventure. As we told stories and laughed with each other, I couldn't help but be pleased with how our trip was going. And then the howling started again, but this time, it was closer. Much closer. Concerned, we grabbed our flashlights and started scanning the area surrounding our campsite. There was still no sign of any animals nearby, but we couldn't shake the feeling that we were not alone. The woods, which had been our source of peace and serenity during the day, now seemed sinister and forbidding. The wind picked up rustling the trees and casting shadowy figures into our camp that danced around, further fueling our paranoia. We finally decided to call it a night, the uneasiness too palpable for any further enjoyment. Retiring to our tents, I laid down in my sleeping bag, listening intently to the sounds of the forest, trying to discern if there was anything real to be concerned about, or if I was just letting my imagination run wild. It was around 3 a.m. when I heard it a slow, deliberate crunching of leaves, the sound of something or someone approaching the campsite. I strained my ears, anxiously trying to determine the direction the noise was coming from when the howling resumed. This time, it sounded like it was right outside my tent, sending shivers down my spine. I grabbed my flashlight and decided to confront whatever was out there, hoping it was just a coyote or some other forest animal. I quietly unzipped the door of my tent and peered into the darkness. My heart raced as the beam of my flashlight slowly swept over the campsite, revealing nothing out of the ordinary. The sound stopped, the only noise now coming from the wind and the distant howl. Emboldened, I stepped out of my tent and called out to whatever it was, demanding that it leave our campsite. At first, there was only silence, as if the forest itself was holding its breath. And then, to my absolute terror, I heard a deep, guttural chuckle coming from just beyond the tree line. It sounded menacing and entirely human, yet distorted in some unnatural way. I started to fear that we might be dealing with something beyond our understanding, something that wouldn't simply leave us alone. Retreating into my tent, I roused my friends and told them what I had experienced. They were as unnerved as I was, and we all agreed we needed to pack up and leave first thing in the morning. We spent the rest of the night tense and sleepless, every sound amplified in the darkness, each of us hyper-aware of our surroundings. When morning finally broke, we frantically packed our belongings 
and left what had once been our haven in haste. I couldn't be more relieved to be heading back to civilization, away from that unsettling presence that had tormented us during our last couple of nights in the woods. So what do you think, everyone? We've debated about this experience a number of times since then, and none of us can come to a definitive conclusion. Maybe it was just a local playing a trick on us, or perhaps some kind of animal that sounded more human than it should have. But deep down, a part of me can't help but feel like there was something truly otherworldly lurking in those woods. I'm not sure what exactly we encountered near Flagstaff, but it's an experience I don't want to deal with again. I'm sharing my story for the first time, hoping to receive advice or find others who had similar experiences. This has been haunting me for years, and I have no idea what to make of it. So let me start by introducing myself to establish that I am a regular person who had an irregular experience. My name is Steve, and I am a 48-year-old engineer from Arizona. I have been working for several reputable civil engineering companies throughout my life, and I have a loving wife who is a medical professional. We live in a relatively urban area, but we used to spend a lot of time at my wife's parents' ranch in rural Arizona. This experience took place in the summer of 1998, when we brought our five-year-old son and our two-year-old daughter to the ranch for a two-week vacation. It all began on our second day at the ranch, when my father-in-law, John, decided to show me a strange occurrence. We went out to the far side of the property that was not frequently visited, as there weren't any animals grazing there. A large circle, about 15 feet in diameter, was carved into the dry earth. The inner circle was sunken a couple of inches, and there appeared to be no trace of any activity outside it. My initial reaction was that someone had created a fire pit of some sort, or perhaps it was the remnants of local teenagers causing mischief. But John insisted that he had never seen anything like this in his 35 years of living on the property. He even mentioned that the ranch's previous two generations had never mentioned it either. We decided to monitor the site and see if anything else strange happened. Over the next week, our vacation continued normally. We had barbecues, went horseback riding, and took our kids to see the beauty of rural Arizona. But something felt off, especially around dusk. I remember standing outside, feeling an uneasy presence and an almost electric tension in the air. On the eighth day, John and I decided to check on the circle again. It had changed. The sunken area in the middle had turned black, as if it had been scorched. We could not find any evidence of someone burning anything in the circle. There weren't any ashes or remnants of a fire. We decided to take some photos to show to our local police or perhaps a geologist, thinking they might have a rational explanation. That evening, the unnerving feeling I had been experiencing around dusk intensified. The kids were already asleep, and my wife and her mother were watching a movie. John and I were sitting on the front porch when we noticed an eerie orange glow off in the distance. It wasn't the direction of the circle, but it was odd enough that we decided to investigate. With a pair of binoculars, John scanned the area. He was silent for a moment before handing them to me. I nervously looked through the binoculars. What I saw was indescribable. Humanoid silhouettes with elongated limbs, seemingly dancing or performing some ritualistic actions around a glowing orange orb. It was difficult to make out any specific details, but the outlines of their bodies appeared both familiar and alien at the same time. Unsure of what to think, we agreed to keep a discreet watch on the spectacle from a safe distance, taking turns with the binoculars. After about an hour, the figures dispersed, and the glowing orb faded away. As they vanished, the tension in the air dissipated, and I felt a strange sense of relief, as if a weight lifted from my chest. The next day, we couldn't shake off the feeling that we had experienced something otherworldly. We debated over whether we should tell our wives and involve them, but we ultimately decided to keep it between us until we had more answers. We spent the next few days investigating the area, but found nothing. The scorched circle still mystified us, but we started coming to terms with the possibility that the dancing figures might have been a shared hallucination, or just a trick of the light. The feelings of unease became a distant memory and our vacation resumed its normal course. The night before we were due to leave the ranch, my wife and I stayed up late talking about life, love, and our future. When she got up to get some water, I stayed in the bedroom, gazing out the window. The unease I had felt nights ago crept back as I noticed the orange glow in the distance. Overwhelmed by curiosity and fear, I immediately woke John 
and informed him about the glow. As quietly as possible, we grabbed a flashlight and set out to uncover the truth. We silently approached the location, careful not to stumble upon the seemingly unnatural beings. As we neared the area, our flashlight suddenly went out. We felt blinded and vulnerable, but as our eyes adjusted to the darkness, the orange glow was unmistakable. The humanoid figures danced around the orb once more, their motions fluid and synchronized. This time we saw more details. Their skin looked smooth and had a metallic sheen, like liquid silver. Their eyes, reflecting the orange light, seemed to be pools of fiery energy. Determined to capture some proof, I fumbled with the camera we brought. But before I could take a single photo, the beings, as if sensing our presence, stopped their dance and stared directly at us. My heart pounded as I felt their eyes lock onto mine. In that moment, we heard a voice in our heads, a chorus of energy that conveyed a sense of imminent departure and a farewell. The feeling was akin to saying goodbye to an old friend, but it was also tinged with caution. It was a warning, but there was also an odd sense of comfort. Then, without a sound or a gesture, the figures and the orb disappeared, leaving us in total darkness. We returned to the ranch, shaken and unsure of what just happened. Were we the victims of a well-orchestrated hoax? Or did we really experience an encounter with beings beyond our comprehension? Unfortunately, the evidence we gathered didn't provide the definitive answers we sought. So what do you think? My story is unsettling, and I've been hesitant to share it over the years. Only a few close friends and family members have heard about it, but I doubt any of them truly believe me. The girlfriend I was with at the time was deeply affected by the encounter. So much so that she hasn't been the same since that incident. I've decided to share this experience here because I don't know where else to turn, and I hope someone can provide some answers, or at least validate our experience. In the fall of 2017, my then-girlfriend and I went on a road trip to Arizona. We both loved exploring the outdoors, and the promising open roads and unique landscapes of the Southwest seemed like the perfect escape from our daily urban routines. We rented a camper van, packed our gear, and hit the road with anticipation. The first days of our adventure were everything we had hoped for. We hiked through the breathtaking desert landscapes, camped under the stars, and photographed every mesmerizing sunset we saw. One evening, after a long day of hiking, we found a secluded spot to call our campsite for the night. With our van parked just five minutes away from the main road, we felt like we had found our own little piece of paradise in the vast Arizona wilderness. We cooked dinner over our portable stove and enjoyed the warm desert sun as it began to set, casting orange and pink hues across the sky. As the light faded, I noticed that there was an extraordinary level of clarity that only the absence of city lights could provide. It was the perfect time to put my amateur astrophotography skills to use. Shortly after dinner, we set up my tripod and camera and began capturing the stunning Milky Way as it arced across the sky. I fussed with my camera settings, excited about the images we were capturing. Then my girlfriend noticed something unusual in the distance, a flickering light that caught her attention. At first, I assumed it might be another vehicle's headlights or simply heat lightning that's common in the desert, but she insisted that we investigate further. Curiosity peaked. We grabbed our flashlights and headed toward the mysterious light source. As we ventured further from our campsite, the darkness seemed to become all-consuming. The sounds of coyotes howling in the distance and the rustling of arid plants in the desert wind only heightened the eerie atmosphere. We walked deeper into the night, following the dancing light until we were about a quarter mile away from our van. The light was now much brighter and seemed to come from within a strange object on the ground, an object that appeared to be metallic and emitting an otherworldly hum. As we moved closer, my heart raced, and a sense of inexplicable fear began to set in. My girlfriend, usually the more level-headed of the two, held my hand tightly as we approached the unknown. The object was now clearer, resembling a disc-shaped craft that seemed to defy all logic and understanding. Suddenly, my world went black. My muscles locked in place, and I found myself unable to speak or move, frozen by an unseen force. My vision blurred as I saw strange figures emerging from the craft, tall and bird-like in appearance. I could feel their piercing gaze, as if they were communicating wordlessly with me in that locked state. Moments felt like hours as I stood there, unable to comprehend what was happening 
or why my entire body had stopped functioning. My girlfriend's grip had been released from mine as though she too experienced the same immobilizing force. The beings made no sound, continuing to exchange telepathic messages with us. I couldn't understand most of it, but the sensation they gave off was a sense of curiosity and a warning in some unspoken language. Without warning, the hold over us ceased just as suddenly as it started. The dark figures returned to their spacecraft, and the metal construction vanished into the night sky, bewildered surroundings of the van. We didn't sleep that night, unable to process the events that had taken place. It was clear from their actions that these beings were observant, unknowable, and protective of whatever secret they held. Soon after that night, my girlfriend and I went our separate ways, though we occasionally exchanged stories of the nightmares we both still experience, and the unshakable sense of being watched. So what do you think? I'm not sure what happened to us that night, or who or what we encountered, but I'll never forget it. Hey everyone, I wanted to share an experience I had a couple of years ago while hiking in a remote area of Arizona. I'm not sure what I encountered, but it was one of the most terrifying and awe-inspiring experiences of my life. I'd love to hear your input, so please bear with me through the long read. My experience took place during the fall of 2016 in the wilderness of the Superstition Mountains in Arizona. The area is well known for its rugged terrain, hidden history, and the fabled Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. I decided to embark on a solo hiking trip to escape the everyday stresses and explore the breathtaking landscape that Arizona has to offer. The hike started out like any other. The weather was perfect, the skies were clear, and the wildlife was incredibly vibrant. As someone who enjoys hiking alone, I reveled in the solitude and opportunity to clear my mind. After several miles, I decided to set up camp in a relatively flat clearing between two peaks. As darkness started to set in, I built a small fire and prepared my dinner. The quietness of the desert night was occasionally interrupted by the haunting sounds of distant coyotes. It was an ear eyely serene experience, heightened by the stunning display of stars above me. Feeling content, I decided to retire to my tent and write in my journal before calling it a night. I extinguished the fire, zipped up my tent, and began to scribble down the day's adventures. It wasn't long before I drifted off to sleep. Not sure how much time had passed, I suddenly awoke to the unmistakable sound of crunching leaves and snapping twigs. Adrenaline surged through my veins as my grogginess was replaced by the realization that I was not alone. I tried my best to remain perfectly still and focus on the movements outside my tent, trying to determine what creature had decided to pay me a visit in the middle of the night. The intruder seemed to be heavy-footed and large, its weight evident by the sound of cracking branches and rustling foliage. As my ears adjusted to the sounds, I noticed that the creature seemed to be slowly circling my tent. Panic was beginning to set in as I frantically tried to reason with myself that it was probably just a curious deer or an opportunistic raccoon seeking leftovers from my dinner. Preparing myself for the worst, I slowly reached for my flashlight, hoping that at least its glow would be enough to scare the creature away. Inching my hand towards the zipper, I mentally prepared myself for what I might find upon opening my tent. After what seemed like an eternity, I gathered the courage to swiftly unzip the flap and shine my flashlight in the direction of the disturbance. My heart pounded in my chest, and my hands shook uncontrollably as I cast light upon the unknown. To my utter disbelief, what I saw couldn't have been a deer or a raccoon. It was far too large to be either. The creature standing before me was easily over seven feet tall, covered in thick matted hair and towering above me. Though I only caught a brief glimpse, I remember its hulking frame, its enormous arms and legs, and long shaggy hair that matched the surrounding desert landscape. It took only seconds for the creature to disappear behind the dense vegetation, leaving me in both terror and awe. My mind raced, trying to process what I had just witnessed. I spent the remainder of the night wide awake, my ears straining for any sign that the creature would return. However, the only sounds that accompanied me were the distant howls of coyotes and the rustle of wind through the brush. As dawn broke, I couldn't shake the events of the previous night. I quickly packed up my belongings and began my descent back towards civilization, my mind a whirlwind of thoughts and fears regarding the creature I had encountered. I couldn't determine if it was a figment of my imagination, or if I had truly experienced something supernatural. Upon returning home, 
I spent countless hours researching various animals native to Arizona, seeking an explanation for my encounter. I considered possibilities such as a bear or an escaped exotic pet, but nothing I found seemed to fit the description of the creature that loomed above me in the darkness of the wilderness. To this day, I still cannot explain what I saw on that fateful night in the Superstition Mountains. I've had trouble sharing my story, fearing ridicule and disbelief. However, I can't help but wonder if others have encountered similar creatures in the vast, mysterious expanse of Arizona's deserted landscape. Last year I moved to a small town in Arizona known for some mysterious occurrences. I won't name the town specifically for privacy reasons, but the who is mainly me, my wife, and some other people we encountered along the way. What happened was simple but strange, and honestly we still can't confidently decide as to what it was. When I first moved in, some of the locals told me about strange happenings in the surrounding forests, especially around the famous hiking trails. But I was never a superstitious person, and neither was my wife, so we never really thought too much about it. However, one hot summer day in 2020, we finally decided to check out the popular hiking trail. We had been told that there was a beautiful cliffside at the end of the trail that had an incredible view of the area. We thought it would be a perfect way to spend our weekend, so we packed our gear, put on some comfortable shoes, and headed out. The trail itself was nothing out of the ordinary. A winding dirt path surrounded by tall trees, cacti, and the occasional desert critter scampering away. We took our time, enjoying the picturesque scenery and the almost eerie silence that the forest provided. As we got closer to the cliffside, I couldn't help but notice some odd markings on the trees. Deep, long scratches ran down their trunks as if an enormous animal had clawed at them. I pointed them out to my wife, and although we speculated on what could have caused them, we couldn't come up with a definitive answer. So, we shrugged it off and continued towards the cliffside. When we finally arrived at the cliffside, we were rewarded with an awe-inspiring view that stretched for miles on end. The landscape below was a mix of lush green trees, rolling hills, and patches of vibrant desert flora. We took in the vista, snapping some pictures and basking in the serenity of the moment for some time. As dusk began to approach, we decided it was best to start heading back since we didn't want to be caught in the wilderness at night. We began our return hike, but something felt off. The air felt heavier, as if a storm were brewing, though there wasn't a cloud in sight. My wife also noticed the change in atmosphere and suggested we hasten our pace. As we continued, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. Every once in a while I could swear I saw a dark figure lurking in the tree line. I convinced myself it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, but my wife admitted that she felt the same way. We soon came across a group of four hikers chatting with a park ranger. They seemed animated as if the ranger was telling an exciting story. We decided to join them and ask if they had experienced anything unusual on the trail. My heart pounded in my chest as I braced myself for their reply. The park ranger looked us over for a moment before telling us that many people reported strange sightings and sensations in the area, particularly around the cliffside we had recently visited. Some believed it was haunted, while others theorized that there might be some unusual animal activity. No one had ever been harmed as far as he knew, but it was a common enough occurrence to merit concern. Feeling both relieved and disquieted by the fact that we weren't alone in our experiences, we continued on our journey. By now, the sun was beginning to set, casting long shadows through the trees. The weight in the air seemed to be growing, and we both felt a deep sense of urgency to leave the trail as soon as possible. As we hurried down the path, heavy footsteps echoed behind us. My wife and I exchanged panicked glances as we increased our pace, but the footsteps seemed to match our speed. I couldn't help but fear that whatever mysterious creature was responsible for the claw marks on the trees had decided to follow us. When the trail finally opened up to the familiar parking lot, we quickly got into our car and locked the doors. As we peeled out of the parking lot and navigated the winding road out of the area, we couldn't help but feel relieved. Whatever had been following us seemed to have been left behind in the forest. Looking back on our experience, we are still unsure as to what truly occurred that day. Was it a malevolent spirit haunting the cliffside, or a rare animal that called the Arizona woods home? Did our minds play tricks on us, or were we genuinely pursued by an unknown entity? 
We may never know the truth, but one thing is for certain. We don't ever want to experience anything like that again. I've never really gone public with this, and honestly I don't know what to make of it myself. I've only told a few close friends and family members, but most of them dismissed it as some kind of hallucination or overactive imagination. I live in Arizona, and what I experienced was truly bizarre, which is why I'm turning to you all for help making sense of it. It took place early one morning in the fall, just before 6.30 a.m., when there was just enough light from the rising sun to see. I was on my way to work, driving through the barren Arizona landscape on a rather quiet and uneventful morning. My route took me past the outskirts of the city and deep into the desert, far from the distractions of the urban landscape. There were no streetlights, just the sun slowly creeping up over the horizon, leaving long, eerie shadows on the desert floor. The road was empty, and I had been lost in thought when I first noticed something strange in the distance. At first, it was just a dark shape against the backdrop of the desert slowly growing larger and more defined as I approached. As I got closer, I could make out the features of what appeared to be a massive, bird-like creature perched atop a large cactus. I'll admit, at first I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. I was still tired, and maybe my eyes were deceiving me. Though as I continued to drive, the creature seemed to glide effortlessly across the road and onto another towering cactus. The adrenaline hit me like a freight train as I realized I saw something unexplainable, something supernatural. I couldn't quite place what this thing was. It had the body of a bird, yet still resembled a desert-residing creature. As I inadvertently slowed down in shock, my heart raced, and a sense of unease washed over me. This was something I'd never seen before, and the fear of the unknown gripped me tightly. The roads were still empty, and there was no one around to share this bizarre encounter with. A million questions raced through my mind. What was this creature? Is it native to Arizona, and if so, why have I never seen one before? Was I the only one witnessing this strange phenomenon, or were there others out there who had seen something similar? I tried to continue driving as normal, but my eyes were constantly drawn back towards the creature. It appeared to move from one location to another effortlessly, as if it could glide on air. Its movements were fluid and otherworldly, propelling it through the air with a sense of grace and purpose that seemed almost sinister. Several times, I considered turning around and heading back to the relative safety of the city, but a morbid curiosity kept me moving forward. I wanted answers, or at least some kind of evidence to show that I hadn't lost my mind. As I approached my destination, the creature seemed to become more aware of my presence. It would pause for a moment, as if observing me, before moving on to another vantage point. My instincts were now screaming at me to get out of there, but I felt a compulsive need to document my encounter. I fumbled for my phone, trying to snap a picture, but each time I raised it, the creature would seemingly vanish, only to reappear moments later in a different location. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the creature departed from the road and moved towards the distant mountains, disappearing as quickly and mysteriously as it had appeared. It was only then that I found the courage to pull over and try to process what I had just experienced. I also took a moment to search the internet in an attempt to find an explanation for what I'd seen. My search yielded results on various bird species and even desert folklore, but nothing that resembled the creature I encountered that morning. Despite my exhaustive research, I came up empty-handed. This happened a while ago, and I still can't shake the feeling of unease and wonder. I've continued to drive the same route to work, always with a lingering hope that I might see the creature again perhaps to better understand what it was and why it had crossed my path. So, I turn to you all. What do you think? Have any of you ever experienced something similar in Arizona?